I'm Jude Griebel, and um, I'm originally from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. I now work as a visual artist, and I'm based in Brooklyn, New York, and in Alberta. My name is Brendan Griebel, and I'm an archaeologist up in the, the Canadian Arctic. Also, I live between uh, Alberta and Montreal. The Museum of Fear and Wonder is located in rural Alberta near a small town named Bergen. We're kind of a destination that you have to seek out, or perhaps you'll just see it by chance off the side of a highway and go investigate. Fear and Wonder contains Jude and I's kind of lifetime collection. The best definition or scope of the collection is objects with emotional qualities or emotionally uncomfortable in some way, whether it's awe-inspiring or fear-provoking or objects that have been involved in some way with other people's emotions over their, their life history. The collection contains objects that have a sense of story and narrative to them and we feel that just by looking at those objects without any sort of back story, you can sort of have an idea that they had a complicated history or emotions were projected onto them in a certain way. A lot of the objects we feel sort of speak to human experience and stories and a lot of them for that reason are anatomical figures or have to do with certain anatomy. Quite an interesting object that we have here is a doll and it was made in the 1930s in Texas. It's from an old estate in Lagrange, Texas and it's a handmade doll crafted from textile and leather obviously based on a certain child and it stands the height of a child and is the weight of a child. The previous collector who had owned it believed it was changing places in her apartment on its own and so she needed to get rid of it and so it found its home here at the museum. So this is another piece that that's quite unique at the museum. Um, it was created in the 1970s by a prisoner on death row at the Angola Penitentiary in Louisiana. And so he spent his, his final days creating this chess set, obviously reflecting on his life. It's very indicative of prison craft. These are dyed with shoe polish. So they're very kind of interestingly carved, very kind of folk carving, not terribly detailed, but really effective and really kind of emotional characters. I really like the idea that, that this person's final days are, are quite literally played out again and again and again by different people in different configurations. That person's legacy in a way of being continually played out and him thinking about what he had done in his final days. This is one piece I'm really interested in in the collection. It's a Dust Bowl era dollhouse um, that was built um, in the Appalachian Mountains. I'm, I'm interested in, in it for a number of reasons. Um, one being the material, it's created from barn wood and sort of found materials from that time that really sort of speak of the economic depression in that area. And it seems like it was made for, um, very lovingly crafted for one child in particular. And I'm also interested in it because it reminds me a lot of the abandoned prairie farmhouses that sort of um, dot Alberta and Saskatchewan. We kind of see as ourselves as building a, a collection of stories um, based around these objects through the process of, of engaging people. I think through the museum we're trying to expand our own ideas surrounding the objects. So conversations um, with people or groups coming through, people with similar interests who are making the drive out here specifically to see these objects and talk about them with us. That really serves us in a way and it'll help us, um, you know, it'll definitely expand our thinking around the project and I can see the project developing in that respect. Mm -hmm.